Still an old road. Yes. That's on that same spot to keep that historical significance ongoing. Now, if you're a lover of seafood, this is a business place that is versed in that. It is called the Spratnet, owned by locals, dispensers. They are very good at what they do in that regard. So, if you're here enjoying our beautiful country and you would just like to sample a bit of what we have to offer in that regard and you've been told I'm going to take you to Old Road, you have an idea of where you'll be brought. You'll be brought to the first town, the village that was the first town in the entire British West Indies. And you have the beautiful Old Road Bay coastline here to remind you. And as I said to you, you won't regret it because they are all experts here at what they do. This house on our left, it belongs to a very famous lady of our country. Constance Viola Mitchum, that's her name. Mrs. Mitchum, she was the first woman to ever become a minister of government or a member of parliament. In 1984, she decides she is going to enter as the only female candidate to see if she could be successful in attaining a seat. She entered and she was, and she enjoyed it for 11 years, from 1984 to 1995, after which our government and the citizens went in opposite ways, but that is quite expected, to be more precise. It is more prevalent now in our time than it was in hers, but she didn't let that deter her. She knew life goes on. She persevered and she persisted, and right now, She's known to be one of our leading attorneys here in our beautiful country. And she's operating from her law offices in our capital, Basitir. But she was the first woman to ever accomplish that here in this beautiful country of ours. So if you know anything about forestry, you know that mahogany is one of the most sought after woods in the forest. 
Okay. So no wonder at 400 it is still there holding its own. <coughs> now that river, Bloody River, it got its name because of what happened before the British and the French came here to our country. There were some people living up there in the hills, they were called the Caribs or the Kalinagos. But it was said when the British and the French saw them for the first time, they looked at them in a as insignificant, barbaric, uncivilized, unsophisticated. So to them they were not seen as humans. But those people didn't let that deter them from what they're accustomed of doing. They continued tilling the soil, growing for themselves their fruits and vegetables. Well, one day in 1626, when they came from that special tour that day, they met their ill fate. Because while they were there, assembled together, reminiscing about their past, contemplating about their future, they also contemplated the way forward, how we are going to deal with our enemies today, with the British and the French. They formulated a plan, but they didn't get the opportunity to execute it because they were greatly betrayed by one of their own. A lady from within their own group, whose name was Babs, went and revealed everything that was planned to the hierarchies because it was said she was intimately involved with one of those gentlemen. So when that was unfolded, the British and the French joined forces and they went and they massacred two and a half thousand of those innocent people. So their blood ran down that river into the sea for 13 days continuously. So just imagine what it was like if you were there and you saw that and you are aware. That is the blood of those innocent men and women who lost their lives in such a cruel, inhumane and barbaric manner. So that's why that river was called that up to today is still called Bloody River because of what transpired way back then. There's a business place coming up on our left. It used to be in an estate, but now it's called Club Villa. It is owned by a couple right now. It is said these rocks were rocks that used to be used by the slaves during their tenure here in our country. In our country. This pedestrian crossing in the road, the government placed this here in the road to assist the husband and wife who currently owns this building that is over a hundred years. It is owned by a couple at the moment. Now, for a building that is over a hundred years old and looking like that, you have to commend them for the way they maintain that building up to that point. Now, it has rich history. But what makes it so outstanding, it is said it has one of the most ever best kept secrets of all times. Well, don't say, Mr. Gardner, fill me in, and then it's because I won't be able to. But I know when it comes to secrets, how we operate, we're eager, we're anxious, we're curious, we're inquisitive, we want to know everything from A to Z. But what they do as a business, they advertise about it on the internet, they deal with some of the ships directly, so they are advised about that history, and that's a well-guarded secret from God knows when. It does well. So the government plays that pedestrian crossing to assist them with the floor visitors who comes. When you get there, you disembark on the opposite side. The husband or the wife will be waiting to receive you and take you in. And it is said during that tour, that secret from so way back will be revealed. So. I believe that is what so many visitors and locals alike gravitates to. I want to know. I want to hear it. I want to know about it. And if you go, it will be made known to you. And when you continue the tour, you go to the top, as you see there, the top portion. They have some nice sized aquariums with exotic fishes of various colors. And you know where beauty lies. Beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. So as you continue on, You've been enthralled by the beauty that you see. And then when you've been shown a bit of what we have to offer locally, like our Robert monkeys, our peacocks and others, you've been brought back to the front where you were met, either by the husband or the wife, and they thank you for coming. So when I heard that, I said, man, that seems to be a reasonable tour worth having. Because you would not have been treated to one thing which is boring. You would have been given variety treatment. And who does not love variety? Because 
old adage tells all of us that variety is the spice of life. This house is on our right. That's a government housing project. The government intervened and built these houses for the citizens. It appears at the time was struggling with the funds required of them to build one for themselves. And because housing is one of the government's main commitment to their citizens, the government got involved, built those, and when they were completed, gave them out now to the citizens for them to pay back the cost of each one of those on an individual basis over a period of time. So those homes here are known to us locally as the low income earners home. This is one of our sugar estates and you see that chimney has been built by colored rocks. Now it is said those are rocks that was brought in from overseas in the days of old by those who were in control at the time, the generals of this place and the, the sugar mill. So that is one of our farmer sugar estates. Now we have two schools. The first one is veterinary school. And as we proceed on, we are going to see what used to be formerly the International University of Nursing School, but it's no more that at this point in time. Eighty percent of the students who attend these two schools comes from abroad, the United States, the United Kingdom, and Canada. The man who built them, he went by the name of Dr. Robert Ross. Remember I said he went by that name because as I'm speaking to you all, Dr. Ross is no longer around. Over 14 years now, Dr. Ross passed on after he had a prolonged battle with cancer. Right here on our right, these are the laboratory areas of the veterinary school. So as I'm speaking to you, the students who are on this morning's classes, they are right there now pursuing to see if they could be successful in attaining veterinary success. Different species of animals, sheep, horses, cows, donkeys, goats, all these animals belong to the veterinary school and they play that part with the students when they go to do their research to see if they could be successful. Now, what used to be formerly known to us as a nursing school, now here are all these donkeys, as I said, these where they are kept, as I said, different species. So, what used to be formerly the International University of School of Nursing, it is no longer a nursing school. It is now the University of Health and Medical Sciences. used to be formerly the School of Nursing. As I said, it has been changed now from the International University of Nursing School to the University of Health and Medical Sciences.
egrets coming up. They are called egrets. You see them right there yes. on the extreme right. They are called egrets. Now, they chose to nest in those trees, in the top of those trees. And those trees are called acacia trees. And those trees give to those birds the protection that they need from the main predator here, which is locally our mongoose, which is the chief enemy of snakes. That's why we don't have any snakes here in our country. But at the same time, they are the predator to those birds. Now, it could have been divine intervention or the natural instincts of those birds to choose there to make their home. But whichever one it is, in the end, end of the day, none is lost. All are preserved and protected to continue living on. We have a beautiful Caribbean state-of-the-art cinema coming up ahead, and I encourage individuals, families, to go take some time out and enjoy a beautiful movie with their family or friends. Because the uncertainty of life today, the unpredictability of the future, you don't know what's next, who is next, where is next. Take a global look and you see the evidence presents itself, but we still have to live our lives. We make our plans. It doesn't always work out in our agreement with us. Some of us cannot accept. We get angry, we get frustrated, we get agitated. Some of, it, of us even try to stress ourselves out. Now, if you have a beautiful cinema, like this in your vicinity. You wake up one morning, things are not just working with you. The connection is not there. Don't stress yourself out. Life is too short to make that choice. You decide I'm going to pull a movie. Don't tell me you don't have a movie, a picture that you cherish or adore. Because if you say no to me, I'm going to say, well, what about you might have been a fan of James Gardner's in his time when he was on the screen acting out the Maverick or the Rockford Files. As the lady said to me, that was my favorite picture, you know, the Rockford Files, I said, thank you. Of James Bond, so you might have a clipping of James in your archives. Get it out, look at it, enjoy it for the day because this one has passed, prepare for the other day. Because remember, we are not going to be here forever. So enjoy life for as long as you can, to the best you can. Because one day we will be gone. But make full use of it now while it is in your power to do so. On our left, we have our main medical center or hospital. That be named after our country's first health minister. Joseph Nathaniel France was his name. He was a stalwart politician in his day. Also, he represented this area until finally he retired at a ripe old age and he existed to see. So the government built that medical center, our main medical center, and how fitting it is to name it in his honor because he was our country's first minister of health, Joseph Nathaniel France. This is our largest cemetery. It's about 40 acres. But before it became a cemetery as it is now, it used to be in a recreational ground. But all that changed in Eno Island, there was an outbreak of cholera that accounted for one third of the country's population that year. So the authorities had to make sure they had internment sites readily available to intern all those who fell victims to that dreaded disease of that year. This primary school, known and named after an outstanding citizen. William Connor was his name. As a young man, he chose to be a Baptist preacher. He built the first Baptist church in this country. He was from this area. He played his part and he too has gone on. So the government decided to acknowledge his invaluable contribution that he made. So they built that school and named it in his honor. So it is known to us as the Dr. William Connor primary school. He is here, the longest serving governor of what used to be formerly the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, Mr. Kilroy Bernard the Late. This is where he used to be living when he was the governor of that institution for 26 years consistently. And that building itself is over 100 years. We are in the area now known as the Fort. Here is where it was said the French had their establishment 
while they were occupying our country here with the British. Our only locally owned hotel, the Ocean Terrace Inn, is situated in this area also. The residence of the Brazilian ambassador. We had that flag is fluttering in the breeze on your right. That's where the Brazilian ambassador's residence is. Our war memorial site here, the second Sunday in the month of November, is dedicated in honor of our fallen comrades who has given their lives in service for our country. On your right, that's where one of the business places known as the Fisherman's Wharf. So you can go to the Spratnet in Old World, and you can go here to the Fisherman's Wharf around the fort. And I can show you, I can assure you, wheresoever you go, you won't regret it, because they are all experts there at what they do. Now we are heading up the Irish Town Bay Road, heading up into our capital city here. You see, in the ferry terminal, there are two ferries right there. And the reason why they are there is to be of service to visitors and locals alike to ferry us across there to our sister island, which is 11 miles away. Close to an hour and one of our ferries here will get you over there to our sister island of Nevis. The fear to take you, now look at our national birds. They're enjoying themselves there in the beautiful water, the brown pelican. Now, as I said, to get...